HP Brawley and really parked their cars all the way up from Proctor to Boone, mm -hmm. where they play loud music, misogynist music, blank that, ain't no nice music, and they play it loud and strong. So somebody called, was it Alma? I think Alma called me and say they just killed somebody. So we opened the door and we found out at 979, shows me Boone, a rooming house, that a man who has said that he's the owner bust in trying to evict the people. But in reality, you can't evict people that way, no matter how bad you feel about it. Spontaneous eviction. Spontaneous eviction. And in the end, somebody lived, got, lost their life. And and then, before we can get through with that, by then Byron had came by my place, and Byron called us and said, another person was killed, homicide corner of Cameron Alexander and Vine Street. How much more? And yesterday, while we was in the house, a we saw two police cars down by James B. Brawley and um, Boone, and it was a drug bust. So it, it, we got it all. It continues and continues with even a proprietor of a uh, restaurant on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive on Saturday evening. Uh, Mr. Everything's son, he was also shot at, at, in the midst of gun violence. So the list goes on and on daily. It's a daily, this is the problem, it's a daily situation. So we would, would like to put on the table, as she stated, the community engagement piece. We need some walking patrols. Uh, we also need something to deal with that all night long. Easter Sunday, the, the, the group that gathers stayed to 3 a.m. with music like the boom, 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 3 a.m. And uh, we did talk to um, Mr. John Armour, who's with the West Side Future Fund, to let him know that it was, it, it, they were using that building as a place to keep up stuff too. And they blend in with the other noise polluters and uh, rabble rousers. So we got a lot of things coming at us at one time. So that's why we thought it was not robbery to bring the MPU, the city council, citywide, myself, leaders in the community, I see Robin, I see, again, Linda, Alma. Alma was out there for three, three hours and she had a concern about the body was not covered, but they told us that if you cover the body, it affects the crime scene. But for the family that had to stay there and see that loved one dead for that type of time, it's just, we're just going through a it's lot. Egregious. It's egregious and we're going through a lot. But you know, they say, they sort of send us get back. We are going to fight back. Thank you very much. I am Abel Mabel Thomas. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Appreciate that. No, thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, good. Yeah, brother, good. Well, I want to say good afternoon to everyone. I'm Council Member Michael Julius Bond, born and raised in the community, grew up right, right down the street here on Sunset Avenue. And to echo what Sade and Mabel have said, and I'm pleased to stand here with members, longtime members of the community, that there has to be an elevated response in the kind of service that we are demanding from our police and other public safety partners. But we also have to call for people in the community who have been the purveyors of this violence to put guns down. Guns do not resolve disputes. And resolving your dispute with a weapon and a gun amidst our community is objectionable and we're not going to stand for it. And we're going to ask the community to if you know information, to provide that information, whether it's Crime Stoppers or directly to the Atlanta police, uh, because we love this community. Uh, you know, there, there, there are people who are moving to Atlanta, people who moved out of this area, whatever. The, we, we're the people who stayed. We love this community. We love this neighborhood. We were born, all, almost all of us, born and reared on these very blocks. We're not leaving, but the violence must leave. That's right. That's the right. violence must, must stop. Stop the, the violence. The gun must crimes stop. must stop. stop. And yes. they're not tolerant. And for those who carry those weapons, who 
have a propensity to want to use those weapons. We're calling upon you. We're demanding yes. that you put those weapons down and keep them out of our community. We want an elevated response from our Atlanta police. We know that most of these incidences <coughs> over the last few weeks have been relationship to relationship. These are people that have known each other, that have tried to, I guess, obviously tried to kill each other with their weapons. But, you know, that's one point. But they're doing it amidst all of us. They're doing it in the midst of the community. They're doing it around peace-loving, law-abiding law citizens in, in our park, in our community, in around our restaurants, around our businesses, where innocent people, people who love this neighborhood, who live in this neighborhood, who have the right to want uh, to be live in peace in their community and patronize these businesses in the community who've also chosen to stay and to invest in the community. We have a right to be here. Right. Violence doesn't belong here. That's right. And so we're united as a community to say no more violence, no more guns. We're not gonna tolerate those who use weapons in our community. And we encourage the community to help us keep our community safe by reporting what you know to either Crime Stoppers or to the Atlanta police, or letting us know who, who are the prevailers of this violence. If you have a young person in your, in your home that has a weapon that's not a legal weapon, and you know that they should not have that weapon, talk to them, reach out to them. Bullets, this is not a James Bond movie. Bullets don't have names on them. Right. They kill indiscriminately. And a young girl, as Mabel pointed out, our uh, public servant emeritus <laughs> in the community, a young three-year-old girl That's right. almost lost her life. My God, yeah. And she was not in a dispute. Right. She was not angry at anybody. She hadn't disrespected anybody. She hadn't done anything right. except want to play in the park that we have for our community. And so as I close, I just want to reiterate, we want we appreciate the job Atlanta police does, but we need more of it. We need more presence. We need more activity from the Atlanta police in our community. We want to see bicycle patrols. We want to see foot patrols. We want to see the, pol the officers who live in this community more than just when they're coming and going uh, from their homes, because that's the point of it. That's the point of community policing. That's right. The community is here. We want the policing. We also want the, we also want the community to step up, and we're not going to tolerate the violence. And that means maybe having some uncomfortable conversations with people that you might know to tell them that guns is not the solution to resolve your disputes. If you want to have dispute resolution, conflict resolution. They're not, there are people available for that. If you got a beef with somebody, there's somebody here in the community that can help you address it. But guns are not the answer. And so the community stands ready. We stand ready to back the community up. We're yeah. together. Right. We're together. And we know we're in front of a mural. And, uh, you know, this is Dr. King's neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. This is where he lived. This is where my, my parents, my mother still lives. This is supposed to be the seed of nonviolence. That's right. Right? This is where the nonviolent dreamer literally spent his life. When he, when he chose to live somewhere, he lived down the street at 234 Sunset Avenue. Right. And so we're not going to allow his community, his neighborhood, legacy. his legacy where he grew up to be corroded, eroded, and, and torn down by violence. And so we want those who have that propensity, you're not welcome here. We don't want to see guns in our community, and we want to stand strong so that the community can live in a free and unencumbered, peaceful manner as we should anywhere else in Atlanta. Thank you. All right. After all, all right. guns, are, guns are environmentally hazardous. Guns are environmentally hazardous. Yeah. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. 
I'm Atlanta City Council Member Byron Amos, and I am proud to stand here with my friends, colleagues. We're also been joined by Fulton County Commissioner Natalie Hall, which is the commissioner for the area. Thank you. Thank you. Just like many of us standing here, I too am a legacy resident of the West Side, born, raised, and still stay in Vine City. So at this time, I would like to speak to my neighbors, my friends, and my constituents. The recent incidents of crime that has taken place in this community is too much. Within a week's time, we had three people to be killed. I don't think any of these incidents were strangers on strangers, but I will go on the limb and believe that all of it was preventable. Yeah. The streets of heaven are too crowded with the angels of our residents. We need your help. We need you to work with us. Last year, Zone 1 and Zone 5, by working with the residents, saw a reduction in crime. We need your help again. We can start by simply putting down the guns. As my colleague has said, bullets have no name until they reach their intended or unintended target. You know, it's not snitching when it's your loved ones being affected. So if you see something, say something. This is our community. These are our streets. Right. These are the places that we call home. But we are here to help. The city of Atlanta, Atlanta Public Schools, the Atlanta Police Department, our NPUs, our Neighborhood Association, Fulton County Commissioner, State Representatives, we are all here to help you. But we need your help. We need for you to tell us what we can do to make our neighborhoods better. Thank you for your support. Thank you for coming out. And at this time, we'll take any questions. What's the next step for what you guys are bringing back to council for the public safety initiative plan? Or what's the next step to kind of get more police in the area once you guys are doing around the council? Well, that's one of the biggest things, as you have already heard, for to ask for more police presence. Uh, we'll start with the park. A year and a half ago, I introduced the paper to create a concept of the park rangers. Um, that was partially funded as a pilot program. I know my colleague, Councilmember Bunn, and I would definitely support putting it in this year's budget to make it a year-round program so we can have more law enforcement in our parks. When it comes to the community, it has to be a, collabor a collaborative effort. We need more police in the neighborhood, but also working with neighborhood initiatives and programs as well for all of us to be involved in the public safety initiative. Well, I do know, and I, I let our uh, MPU chair speak, that um, in our MPU meeting that actually took place yesterday, we do have police representatives. When there's a major incident, council people often get texts or phone calls from either the police chief or the zone major to let us know what's taking place. So there has been ongoing conversation. I personally have not had a conversation with APD leadership about the next steps. That's definitely a conversation to take place. So I don't know if you yes. want Yes. Um the uh, major comes to the MPU, zone one major comes to the MPU or sends a representative. However, those, uh, those reports are fine, but we need, we need on the ground. And that's what I'm saying. I am saying that the police, are, I spoke to Dave Wilkinson today, and we talked he about the, over, the police, over the police foundation. He's the direct president of the police foundation. And we spoke about the all he the one gave me the number 25 i knew it was a way too big number to never see the police have you seen is there anyone from the police department i sent it out broadly that is here to to stand with us no right. no but they live in this neighborhood right. and you haven't seen any any indication of a police officer since we have gathered this is the this thing that i'm talking Oh, yes, I send it out broadly. And I announced it at the MPU meeting last night. So it's no reason for not a representative to be here. Because this is the issue. We have police in the neighborhood. They're not engaging with community. We have so many things that are up against. We're up against environmental issues. But I say, I say lead in the ground is better than lead in a black body. 
Right. So this is, we are under so much aggression around environmental issues, but it's, it's pollution, noise pollution, whatever it is, it is a plethora of things that have come upon the people of English Avenue and Vine City, and we are sick and tired of it, and the neighbors do not deserve it. They pay taxes like everyone else. May, this neighborhood may not generate as much taxes as another neighborhood, however it's going up every minute, but we know that we deserve safety, security, and a peaceful life. Don't you feel scared? No. Well, and, and then also, we have to realize those are last year's numbers. The clock began to tick again at the beginning of the year. Um, before we go any further, we have been joined by organizations. The, the community is just so tired. We're trying everything that we can. So I know they're normally behind the scenes, but we have an organization operating inside the community, um, Cure Violence, whose sole job and responsibility is to be in the community, speaking with the people, trying to figure out what's going on, what's going to take place before it takes place. So as you can see, we have all type of remedies, ideas in play, and we just need to make sure that we stay together and continue to work together. Any more questions? Well, I mean, what we've seen from APD to prevent violence, their job is to prevent violence. So being here, what we need to see is a bigger presence. Um, that comes to budget, making sure they have to be able to hire um, our officers, make sure that they are actually here in our communities, making sure they are around when there are large events. So those are the things that are ongoing every day. But I want to also to make a point of that we also have a cadet house uh, in our neighborhood. It's an apartment complex that are full of recruits. And if, if our neighborhood is good enough to house the recruits, if our neighborhood is, is good enough to house the first at Promise Center in the, in the city of Atlanta, if our neighborhood is good enough to house 25 at least police officers, then it, 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 it is not a problem to think that we should be, in, we should be able to see presence of police officers. They should walk together. They should ride together. They should get on bicycles, whatever it takes. It would reduce crime just to see their presence. And we are not, uh, they are not living up to the agreement from the community. They are not living up to it. So we, any more questions? Shari, there is a, a gentleman who any is authorized to speak from current violence because if you're doing a program in the community, you cannot have them at a press conference Bring and them the on. police think that they something else. Oh, yeah. But we are, we do have Mr. Powell here who is uh, designated to speak so you can know that there are others who are trying to help us and we're trying to reach out to all groups that's doing anything positive. so we can do something positive together. Yes, sir. And I support and believe in this program so much that he will actually close us out. <laughs> this will be your last speaker. Good evening, everyone. My name is R. Powell, the program manager for Cure Violence OAA. Uh, basically, we are an evidence program, and our, our, our main focus is to uh, prevent, the, prevent the spread of violence, stop the transmission, and change community norms. So we're basically out canvassing the communities and trying to stay ahead of any anything that we get wind of that could be a, a possible uh, violence or shootings or retaliations and try to meet with those individuals and nip it in the bud and stop it from escalating. So we are uh, out here actually trying to see what we can do uh, as being in the community and see what we can do to help assist in stopping the violence in this community. How much do you believe that violence is tied to gang activity? How much, I, you say, say the question? How much of this violence do you think is tied to gang activity? Well, we're, we're, we don't have any specifics about if it's gang related or not. I can't speak on that. What are the conversations in the community talk about relationships and family members or friends that might have guns and having those conversations? How do you talk about that in your program? Basically, we just, you know, we try to, uh, we have people that communicate with us to let us know their concerns and issues. And like I said, once we find out who or if we know anything about any, we just try to assist and just try to get them to not retaliate or, or have any issues. So we're, we're, we're we're a non-police and 
punitive agency. We don't, that's, that's not our job. You know, we just try to do what we can to uh, assist in curbing the violence in the city. They, they're in the neighborhood, they're on uh, Martin Luther King, so they're right in the neighborhood. So we, we're looking at all the groups that say they want to do something, whether it's, whether it's the 10,000 Fearless, which is nice. Everybody that's doing something good, let's come together to fight this foolishness because we don't deserve it and we're not going to take it. We're not going to take it. All right, well, thank you for coming out. I guess everyone will be around for individual interviews if, if you want them and need them. Thank you again. Thank you. So much. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.